¡Vámonos! I'm gonna make some braised short rib tacos over homemade con tortillas topped with chunky guacamole. And I'm gonna pair that with a plush traditional Rioja Gran Reserva. And then for dessert, I'm gonna make a mango pecan tart with fresh slices of mango sitting on vanilla pastry cream with a crunchy crust made with pecans. I'm gonna pair that with a zesty Rioja Blanco. We're gonna start with searing the meat. I have two pounds of beef short ribs. I'm gonna season them with salt and pepper generously. I'm gonna turn on my heat at medium high. I want it to be really, really hot so the meat sears beautifully. I'm going to add about three tablespoons of vegetable oil. You want the oil to be really hot and you can tell when the oil is hot when you start seeing little ripples on the surface of the oil. And you don't want to overcrowd it. But what happens is that all the juices of the meat will start to come out and then instead of a sear, you will get a sweat. You want it brown, just like this. And we're not cooking it completely because first we sear and then we're gonna braise it. So this is the first layer of flavor. The wines from Rioja come from Spain's most celebrated wine region. I mean, the incredible thing about the wine from Rioja is that they go just as well with a taco as with any fancy dessert that you can think of. So now that all the meat is seared, I'm going to add a cup of white chopped onion and we're gonna let the onion cook and soften for just a couple of minutes. After the onion softened and I can see the edges begin to brown, I'm going to add four garlic cloves that I coarsely chopped right in here. And I want the garlic to soften and cook just until it becomes fragrant. So once I start smelling the cooked garlic and I see it change color, I'm going to pour right in here two and a half cups of pomegranate juice. So we're deglazing the pan so we get all of the flavor from the brown meat which is going to give the dish a lot of depth. And then I'm gonna add about a cup and a half of chicken broth, but you could use beef broth or vegetable broth too. And I'm gonna add a teaspoon of crushed rosemary right in here. So once it's strongly simmering, I'm going to add the brown pieces of meat. So our short ribs, will have had the double treatment of having been browned for that nice layer of flavor. And then they're gonna braise in the oven in this delicious pomegranate juice mixture so they can become really, really luscious and soft and shred beautifully for some yummy tacos. I have my oven preheated at 350 and I'm gonna put this in there for an hour and a half. While my short ribs are braising, let me tell you about the wine I chose to pair them with. So I went with these Ramirez de la Piscina Gran Reserva 2013. The wines from Rioja are located in the north central part of Spain and I didn't know this, but there's over 600 bodegas and winemakers to choose from. And if you're like me, you go into a store and you're gonna choose wines by the label, like what looks more appealing and pretty to you. But the labeling system of the wines of Rioja makes you an instant expert because it has this unique and trusted system where you can see the category of wine, which gives you aging cues, style cues, so you suddenly become an instant expert. And Rioja is Spain's oldest officially recognized winemaking region. They have time-honored tradition coupled with contemporary innovation, which makes for consistently exceptional wine. They can match any kind of cuisine, so you can pair them with your next takeout order or home-cooked meal. Mmm, smells yummy. 
I feel them so, like I'm, I'm just touching them with the tongues and they're falling apart. Look at these. I mean, these are like all the things we need for some ridiculously delicious tacos. Mm. So I'm gonna just finish shredding the meat, which like shows zero resistance. It's just like begging to be tucked into those corn tortillas. I'm going to add a little bit of this braising broth so it stays moist and juicy. Perfect. Now I'm gonna make the chunky guacamole. I'm gonna add a quarter cup white chopped onion, one jalapeño that I finely chopped, and the juice of a lime. I'm gonna chop a little cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, you can skip the cilantro and add another herb of your choice. Now I'm adding salt. I'm gonna mix these. So we're macerating the onion, the chile, and the cilantro a little bit. And then I'm gonna use two ripe avocados. Oh, so beautiful, perfectly ripe. Mm, mm, mm. And you can leave your guacamole as smooth or as chunky as you want. I love my guacamole chunky. Some people like the guacamole a lot more smooth and you just mash away. I have everything I need for my taco now and I have my wine that I'm gonna pair with. Let me open it up. I went for these Ramirez de la Piscina Gran Reserva 2013, which is intense. The flavors linger. Yay! Pour. Mm, it's so delicious. So let's build the taco. Oh, this is gonna go so perfect. So I have my tortilla, I have my comal, which is preheated at medium heat. These are homemade corn tortillas, but you can also buy corn tortillas at the store. And now I'm gonna add my meat. I love my tacos chubby, so we're gonna make a chubby taco. Some of the guacamole right on top. Then we're gonna add some queso fresco. So here we go with the taco. Tacos just make me so happy. Mmm, mm -hmm. mm. it's so incredibly soft and it has that flavor from the pomegranate juice that's so flattering. The guacamole is so fresh. Mm -mm -mm. This is like the perfect pairing. You have the dark cherry notes and the intense Asian spice flavor in there that goes so well with the pomegranate. And then you have the fresh bite of the avocado and the salty and slightly tangy queso fresco. This is truly a fabulous match. One amazing thing about tempranillos is that they're the friendliest for food. They will elevate any kind of dish from tacos to chocolate mousse. Now another choice of wine would be to do not a Gran Reserva, but to do a Reserva. Milenrama, Rioja. Here you get into the categories of wines because the Gran Reserva are wines that are aged over five and a half years between barrel and bottle. Some Gran Reserva wines are aged even more than that. In Gran Reserva wines, the flavors linger longer. They're more intense. They're more complex. Slightly lighter are the Reserva wines. Reserva wines are aged at least two and a half years between barrel and bottle. They also have complex layering of flavors. They feel velvety and smooth when you drink them. So both wines are really amazing choices. But I'm just gonna continue with the one that I opened, which is just perfect, and continue eating my taco. <laughs> I'm gonna make this mango tart and I'm gonna pair it with this Bodegas Vilar Rioja Blanco 2019. It's gonna go so well because they're both fruity and refreshing and zesty. It's gonna be the perfect match. So let's get started with the tart. So I'm gonna start by making the pastry cream. All you need to do is have a saucepan 
at medium heat. And I'm gonna pour in here one cup of whole milk. Then I'm gonna add one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Heat the milk with the vanilla just until I see the milk begin to bubble around the edges. That's good. And now I have three egg yolks right here. I'm gonna whisk the egg yolks until the color has changed from that bright yellow to a more pale yellow color and they've thickened considerably. And now I'm gonna add a quarter cup of sugar and I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of cornstarch, which is what's gonna make my pastry cream thicken. And here I have the milk, and because it's still hot, we're gonna pour it in a very, very thin stream so that the egg yolks don't curdle. So little by little. You add a little, you whisk a little and it already smells like pastry cream. And now that it's all mixed and incorporated, I'm gonna pour it right back. I have my same saucepan right here. And then I'm gonna put it back over medium-low heat. And then I'm gonna keep a careful eye for a few minutes as it thickens. Pastry cream demands a lot of your attention. So you can see how it's now beautifully thick. We have to let it cool until it completely cools and it's even better if it chills. So I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap and put it in the refrigerator. So now I'm gonna make a glaze. I really like making a glaze for a fruit tart because it gives it a really nice sheen over the top and it also adds a little bit of a sweet and tart taste. So I'm gonna add a quarter cup of apricot jam and I'm gonna squeeze the juice of a lime then I'm gonna turn my heat over medium low and I'm just gonna stir until it all mixes and dissolves. That's it. I'm just gonna let it cool a little and that's that. So now we're ready to put it together. I'm gonna start with my pecan pie crust, but you can use any pie crust that you like. And then I'm going to add the pastry cream that already cooled and chilled and you can see how nice and thick it is. So this is gonna be the creamy custardy layer. You have the crunchy, you have the creamy, you're gonna have the fruity. Usually fruit tarts are so pretty and they seem so precious but it doesn't have to be perfect. You can play with your fruits, make whichever shape your fruit wants to go. And it's all gonna be delicious anyway. If you wanna add a pop of color, you can add some berries. I'm just gonna add some right in the middle. The last thing is that glaze. I'm just gonna gently brush. It gives it that beautiful sheen and a little bit of pop of color and also a little bit of flavor. So now I'm gonna put the tart in the refrigerator so that it can chill along with the wine that I'm gonna pair it with. I have my tart that chilled. I'm gonna pair the mango tart with this Bodega Vilar Rioja Blanco 2019, and I think it's gonna be the perfect match. Yay. See the beautiful color. Mm. It's light, it's zesty, it's refreshing. Very citrusy, kind of austere, and a little bit minerally. Really delicious. Let me cut a piece of the tart. I'm gonna do a couple berries in here too. Let me try. Refreshing, so bright, really light, so fruity, of course, with so much fruit and the pastry cream with the vanilla. Mm. Such a great match. It's fruity, 
And this fruity goes beautifully well with the fruity and refreshing and crisp from the tart. Such a perfect match. But what is also a really good match is this Crianza, a Sierra Cantabria Crianza 2017. And different from the generico category where the Bilar fits, the Crianza has a little bit more aging. At least one and a half years of aging between bottle and barrel, so it gives it a little bit more oomph, like a little bit more depth. And this Sierra Cantabria has a little bit of a cocoa, coffee, cherry taste, which is a little bit more intricate, but plays beautifully with the fruit tart or any dessert.